Hey guys, Mr. Ridgeway here. So today I'm going to be taking you through a couple of really important uh, lessons that are going to be dealing with um, both, uh, well, two really, really important topics, and that is the scientific revolution and the enlightenment. And I call this lesson Nonstop Nerds because it is going to involve a lot of changes about how human beings are thinking. So before you do anything else, um, just be aware as I'm kind of leading you through this lesson, there's going to be things that um, I'm going to need you to be clicking on the slides yourself to do, and I'll try to indicate uh, the time where that is happening. Also, please, uh, as always, be aware you can always pause and stop the video if you need more time to write or process uh, your thinking as we're going on. So, uh, for your warm-up, uh, I want you to click on this orange line uh, and answer this question. Do you think a car with square wheels can provide a smooth ride? And I just want you to make a guess, uh, yes or no. Uh, once you've done that, then you can continue on with me, and we'll kind of talk about what we're going to be doing. Uh, so we're going to be looking here at, first of all, explaining the key ideas of what the Enlightenment is. And we'll talk about what that movement is and all the, everything that goes into it. And then we'll also um, describe some key developments of the scientific revolution, and then explain how kind of it's impacted people and the world. So let's get into it. Uh, so uh, for your warm-up... Uh, hopefully now you've made your guess. Do you think a car with square wheels can really give a smooth ride? Uh, right here on slide number three, there is a video where you can actually see uh, if it does really work. And um, go ahead and uh, check it out. Uh, so uh, when you were making your prediction, you made a guess. And then I showed you, uh, well, you, you got a moment there to see on Mythbusters that really actually square wheels can provide a smooth ride. Um, so if you happen to know it, do you know the name of the method that you and I guess Mythbusters uh, also use to discover the answer? Um, and perhaps you've studied this in science. And if you haven't, um, it is the scientific method. But what you need to understand is that that kind of thinking where I'm going to go and like test something, I'm going to like, you know, check variables and, you know, I'm going to have control groups and that kind of stuff. That is a brand new idea at this time. And today what we're going to be really diving into is how we get that idea and why it matters. So uh, let's go ahead. We are going to jump into our mini lesson and we are going to talk about the scientific revolution and its impact. Uh, also, please be aware I will be collecting the notes from today. Um, so there is a note outline here that you can turn on Canvas or you can do it on paper. All right. Uh, so uh, analyze how does science change your understanding of the universe and then imagine what new laws will human beings discover about the universe as time goes on. Uh, the scientific revolution. Uh, so what what is this thing? Well, it is a uh, the name that we give to a whole bunch of advances that happen in science in the 1500s and the 1600s. Um, the thing that uh, we've kind of been trying to hopefully show you this unit is that there's a lot of things happening in Europe all at once. Uh, we've got the Thirty Years War happening. We've got the English Civil War. Um, we now in, we're, we're throwing into the mix the Protestant Reformation, which we've talked about, and also then the Scientific Revolution. Um, here, at, towards the end of this lesson, we're going to then be throwing the Enlightenment into the mix, which is a whole new kind of evolution of this uh, kind of this. You know, all, all this chaos that is happening in Europe at this time. Okay, uh, so what, what is the scientific revolution? Well, it, it generally, most historians will point to it being two things. Number one, it's the introduction of this idea that the universe works off of a system of laws that can be discovered. Uh, and that second, uh, these laws can be tested then through the scientific method. Um, and here we're only speaking about science. Uh, and later you're going to see people will take this idea and then start applying it to human beings and life and kind of thinking about, you know, government and stuff like that, um, which we'll, we'll get to here in a second. But for now, the scientific method. If you don't know the scientific method, uh, I've put the steps over on the right-hand side of the slides. You know, ask a question, make a hypothesis, test an experiment, you know, analyze the results and draw conclusions and then retest, right? All the things that we've uh, hopefully learned in a science class. So I want you to think, um, just before we go on here, what's something that you've tested with the scientific method before today? Um, could be something in a science class you've done before. And then I'll give you some time here to pause and write down your answer before you go on. Uh, so, uh, using the scientific revolution, um, well, 
I uh, the the classic example I think would be people like Isaac Newton who's trying to discover the laws of gravity um, but then there's also a whole bunch of advances that happen in physics and chemistry and biology and medicine um, Newton is interesting just as a person in and of himself uh, because he for example discovers not only or well writes down um, the the laws of the laws of gravity but he also discovers that for example like light is uh, made up of um, you know, it, he uses actually a prism to discover that light is composed of uh, numerous different color waves, which is really, really interesting and um, also, you know, worth, worth noting for things that will go on and happen in the future. Um, but also then there's all these developments of what we call social science, and we're going to talk about this more later. We're going to give it a name. Um, not yet, but I, it's, it's talking about in social science, people are going to take this idea of the scientific revolution and they're going to apply it to saying, okay, what if we thought about human life? in the same way? What if we applied reason rather than necessarily just like religious beliefs um, to discovering these natural laws, these unchanging principles that govern humans? Like what, what if we can discover laws that not like, you know, like the law of gravity that apply to human beings? Uh, and that is going to lead us to a whole bunch of thinking um, that we are going to give a very, very special name here uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, but why, why does this matter? Um, well, the scientific revolution is hugely impactful because like what it's like the proverbial snowball. Like as soon as you start discovering, you know, what germs are, then that allows you to go and start making vaccines, which then means people live longer. And so the, the rate of scientific discoveries and the impact that it has are hugely influential. Um, everything from, you know, fertilizers to eventually lasers to, I mean, you go on and on and on and on. Um, the second Thing is that the power of absolute monarchs, and, and we'll talk about this here in a second, uh, is going to decrease because of the scientific revolution. Because kings and queens before who had been like, well, you got to believe me, I got this divine right thing. Like God says that I should be king. People in the scientific revolution are like, so let's test it. Show me the, you know, like show me your DMs, uh, you know, show me the, show me the evidence you got that, uh, that, that God has told you that you're supposed to be king. Um, and what eventually is going to happen is that for most people, uh, and I think uh, generally, I, I, this is probably a very safe thing to say, is that most people uh, believe today that the power of reason outweighs the power of belief in terms of like just understanding the universe. Uh, we tend to take things and to test them uh, rather than, you know, go and trust something that somebody's told us, you know, a thousand or five hundred or, you know, however many years ago. Right. We, we like to test things ourselves. Um, and this also is going to promote uh, something called secularism, which is the idea that government should not be super attached to religion. Maybe the two things should be a little bit separate, at least in the Western world. Uh, and also this idea of individual um, achievement, as Isaac Newton himself would be good evidence of. Let's keep going. Um, so there you go. All right. Now we're going to talk about we're finally going to give that social science part of the scientific revolution a name. And we're going to introduce something called then the Enlightenment, which is kind of like the DLC of the scientific revolution, if you will. Okay, right here, there is a short text. Uh, you can click and read it yourself, um, as well as there's a QR code. If you'd like me to read it to you there, I can do that. Um, so I'll let you go ahead and do that. And your goal there is on the back of your notes to tell me by the end of the reading, what do you think the Enlightenment was? Okay. Uh, and then continuing on, okay, uh, we've got two Enlightenment thinkers. So we've got uh, a man by the name of Thomas Hobbes and another man by the name of John Locke. And these are both English British philosophers um, who are kind of thinking now, uh, taking some of those ideas of the Enlightenment and thinking about the ways that human beings should be governed. And they have very, very different understandings. Um, these two are very, very often classically paired against each other for reasons that will become obvious as you start to read it. Uh, again, if you click on these readings, um, I can read them uh, to you if you scan the QR code. Uh, and what you'll be making then is on the back of your notes, a graphic organizer. Okay. And, uh, the idea behind that graphic organizer is you want to figure out what do these two people say is the problem, uh, with human beings or society or like, you know, what's the issue that needs to be solved and then, um, kind of attached to that, uh, then what's the solution? What, what do they propose as the kind of philosophical answer, um, for, for what can be done? Uh, now 
to end the lesson, uh, there is an exit ticket. Uh, and uh, so here's, um, by the way, what the graphic organizer looks like. This is what you're completing on your notes. Um, and then here's the exit ticket. So before you finish the lesson, I want you to tell me three things you've learned, uh, two questions that you have, and one way something that you learned connects to today's world. Uh, just remember, I'd love to uh, see your notes and I'm planning on collecting them either online or physically when you're done. So just make sure you do everything with fidelity and I will see you guys next class. Bye-bye.